Now we're going to demonstrate the final animation method. That is the timeline. So you recall this is where we have several frames that we want to string together sequentially with a particular amount of time between each frame. Now I really like most of the demos that there are in our textbook and in these slides. This however is not one of them. We're going to have to embellish this a little bit to make it a little bit nicer I think. But we'll start with the initial demo that's in your textbook for the timeline. So again, we have our usual imports. We don't need to see those. We extend application over write start, and down at the bottom we do all the usual stuff we do. So let's again look at uh, focusing on the stuff in the middle here. We're going to create ourselves a pane. It's going to be a stack pane. And we're going to put a string in that stack pane, a piece of text. And it's going to be the string programming is fun. Well, it's supposed to be. Let's change that. Programming is fun. And then uh, what we're going to do is change the color of the text to be red and we're going to add that to our pane. We're then going to make an event handler that's going to handle the timeline animation. This is going to be responsible in the general case for stepping through to the next frame of a number of frames that are going to be presented in sequence. Now rather than have actual frames what the author of your text has done here is simply he's going to go between two so-called frames. One is a string that says programming is fun and the other is a string that's completely empty. So effectively all that's going to happen is you're going to see something that alternates between nothing and programming is fun. And it does so every half second because the duration for the uh, keyframe here is specified to be in milliseconds 500 which is half a second roughly. The idea here is when you create the timeline animation object you specify the time between frames and you give an event handler which is supposed to be responsible for creating the next frame. The set cycle count has been set again to timeline dot indefinite so this is just going to keep repeating forever and then here's where we start the whole animation going. So what do we do to step to the next frame? Well we simply execute this method right here. Well sorry this is uh, set mo on set mouse click. This is going to allow us to pause the animation and then replay it. We'll see how that works when we do the demo. Uh, so the actual code that steps frame to frame is what you see up here in this event handler and as I said earlier this is simply going to alternate between the string programming is fun and a null string. I would have liked this demo better if it had have had more than two frames rather than just going back and forth if it had have had say three or four frames in sequ sequence through them one at a time and that's the change we're going to make momentarily uh, just to make this a little bit more interesting but for now let's go ahead and run it as is. So here we go and you can see it's just alternating between uh, null string and the programming is fun string. When I click the mouse button and hold it then I can get it to stop when I click. If I click again it continues to animate. Now you'll notice that I'm not able to get it to stop when the string isn't showing. Do you understand why that is? give you a hint of what, why it might work if I go down here. I'm going to go right down to the end and try this. So I'm clicking every time it disappears but it still comes back. If it's there and I click it stops. So why can't I make it go away? Well think about it. I need to click on the text. Why is that? We'll take a close look at the code here. The set on mouse clicked method is being invoked on the class or the object text. That means I have to click on the text and that's fine when the text is programming is fun but how do I click on the text when the text is null string? There's nothing there to click on, right? So that's a problem um, and that's why I can only stop it. I can only pause it when it's showing and I can't pause it when it's not showing. So that's kind of an interesting little quirk, isn't it? In any case, as I said, it would have been nice if we had have had 
a couple of frames instead of only two. So why don't we fix the code to make that happen, just to make this a little bit more interesting. And then you'll see I'm probably going to be able to stop on any frame because I won't have any null strings to, to not be able to click on. So what I'd like to do here is have four possible strings that are going to show up. One will be a dash, the next will be a forward slash, and then a vertical bar, and then a backslash. And the idea is to give the illusion of this straight line that's kind of rotating around on the spot. So we'll start off with that. And then in my event handler, instead of just alternating between two frames, what I'm going to do instead is check the first character in the string. There'll only be one character in all of my strings because I'm going to have a single character string in every case. But rather than an if statement that checks the length, instead what I'm going to do is check the character at position 0 or index 0 in my string. And I'm going to check to see what that is and instead of an if statement let's do a switch case on it. So it's going to be a switch statement now. And since it's going to take a little bit of time to type this in, I'm going to pause the video and, and uh, get it all typed in and then show you what we've got. Okay, so there we are. It's all typed in. Let's just talk about what this is going to do now. So every time it's time to change frames, what will happen is we'll do a switch case statement where we check the first character in the string that we have. If it's a dash, then we're going to set the text equal to a backslash. Notice I have two backslashes because, well, backslash acts as an escape character to uh, let us do things like backslash n for new line and so on. So if you want a backslash, you have to put two of them to get one of them. And then if we've got a backslash, then we change that string to just the pipe symbol. If we have a pipe, we change that string to a forward slash. If we have a forward slash, we change that string to a dash and we've wrapped around back to this situation. So we actually have four different frames that are going to present now. So why don't we see what this looks like? So here we go, we're running it. And maybe that's a little bit more interesting than what we had before. We could probably speed that up a little bit. Maybe twice as fast roughly or slightly more than twice as fast. So there you have it, a slightly more interesting variation of the original demo.